your host, Nan Gross. <laughs> like, apparently, I watch a little too much TV in my day. So a um, little less nowadays, but <laughs> enough, clearly, that I have that stuck in my head. Um, so, but I am your host. <laughs> um, so happy that you're joining me here today. If you are watching the replay, where are my replay warriors? Um, I don't know if you all know this, but I think it's like 90% of the videos or something on social media are watched on replay. So don't ever feel bad if you can't join me live. Um, happy to have you whenever you can arrive. And if you ever miss um, the, if you if you end up not being on Facebook a lot or whatever, you can always follow me on YouTube because I do download these videos and upload them over on YouTube as well. So you can always catch the replay that way too. So um, tonight I have some fun things for you tonight. Um, so if you like to color, you're already like, oh, I'm in for tonight. Show me the tips. This is awesome. If you hate to color, don't leave, okay? Stick around, because I have some tips for you. Hopefully there's um, something here that will get you into coloring a little bit more. Um, we, You know, coloring can be as easy or as involved as you want it to be. So I've got some simple tips. I've got some more involved ones. You pick what you want to start with. So let's go ahead and, hello, hello, Penny. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, switch the view. There we go. I always say flip the camera down, but the camera's already down. I'm just switching the view. So I have to get that wording in my head. <laughs> so this is the card that I made for Friday Night Stamping last week, which was not good enough to beat the man um, four weeks in a row, I think it is. He is on a roll, which is awesome. And I do have his card here. I was going to say, did I forget to bring it back downstairs? But no, I didn't. It is right here, and it's gorgeous. And when I saw it, I was like, ooh, it's going to be a close vote. And you know what? Wasn't really even close. He ran away with this one. <laughs> um, I do love that card. I love that stamp set. All the colors were great. It's a really good job. So, um, but I wanted to show you all some coloring techniques this tonight. So I will be kind of putting together one card um uh you know completely but mostly i'm going to be showing you techniques tonight so um here's where we're starting where are my words <laughs> pardon me i have a cough drop in my mouth because i think i'm getting a little bit of a cold i've just got that kind of back and nose thing whatever and I don't want to have a coughing fit in the middle of the live, so I thought it's probably preemptively good to just put a cough drop in. So um, for the card on Friday night, I used our Stampin' Blends. So that's what I'm going to start with tonight. And I've kind of pre-stamped things. I'm already getting dry here. I've just kind of pre-stamped things so you don't have to, because if unless you're new here, and that's fine, um, you know how to stamp an image, so boom, we're done there. So this one is stamped with our Memento Tuxedo Black ink. This particular ink pad is a water-based ink pad, which means it's great with alcohol-based markers. So it's kind of that opposites attract kind of thing. Um, also, you can use our ah, dropping things. <laughs> right on my foot. Um, you can use our regular classic Stampin' Pads with our Stampin' Blends because these are water-based as well. So this one holds up really well. This These hold up great too. So if you want to try that, go ahead. I have done that on occasion, especially when I want, um, they like to, there's this technique that goes around called no-line water coloring where you would stamp your image with like a crumb cake or a really light neutral shade. And then you do all your coloring and it kind of looks like you um, painted it with the blends instead of just following the outline. So, all right, enough yabber yabber. So let's start with our sun. And what I did was I pulled in our pumpkin pie Stampin' Blends and I'm just gonna use the light one, I think. So this again is stamped in our Memento ink. And I'm just gonna go around 
I did have trouble with this because I originally on Friday just did this with um, the yellow and the blue. And then I wanted to add them orange. And yeah, I was having trouble with it. So I'm going to go kind of over the line here because I do want it to seep into the yellow. But I'm not going to use two colors of the orange. I only really want one. And I'm going to use the darker lemon lolly. So you can see that that is beyond the line already. And you do want to be careful when you're getting close to the other image, and I'll show you why. See, I got really close with the orange on my Friday stamp sample, and it leached over into my wave because it will kind of spread. The alcohol ink will spread a bit. A bit. So uh, I'm going to use that brush tip again, and I'm going to just do circular motions, and I'm going to go right over that pumpkin pie line to kind of bleed that into each other. And then I'll just go right to the edge of those rays. So you can see how that's really bleeding kind of into each other and it's given a good um, little, you know, just like a sunset, right? You wanna leave a little white space there before you get to the waves. I may have encroached a little too much still. <laughs> And I am going to go back over this a little bit, just where those meet with the orange. Because I want to make sure that's good. Um, and now I will tell you, after I was done on Friday, I felt like my waves were too dark. So I'm going to use a little less. This is Misty Moonlight. And once again, we've got the thick line here, tells you that's the brush tip. And then the thin line here tells you that's the bullet tip. So if you need to do a little more fine coloring, you can absolutely use that bullet tip. I think I'm going to go ahead and stick with the brush, but I'm just going to go right under the waves where more of a shadow would be. And we'll pull that dark misty moonlight then maybe kind of back here. I think that's all I'll do for the dark. Um, Friday, what I did was, and you can tell on a close-up, I kind of followed the stripes of things a little bit more and tried to make it kind of that varied wave. But the misty moonlight is such a deep color that I think that was kind of lost. <laughs> so I will do this instead. And so now we're going light misty moonlight, which is still pretty deep and dark. And again, leaving a little bit of white next to the crest of the wave. Is that right? The crest? <laughs> um, so pulling the dark kind of out. But as I said, this is still a pretty deep blue. It's kind of like a denim blue. I love Misty Moonlight. Very happy that it came back. So as those dry and blend together too, you'll see a little bit more separation, but you can already tell that it's a little lighter over here and then deeper, darker under that wave where the sun wouldn't have gotten to it, right? So that's how easy it is to color with the blends. I do love them. I think you all know that. Um, we do like to color around here. I did not always like to color. I will share later in the week a story of why I think I didn't like to color for a long time. <laughs> um, but that's, uh, that's really how easy it is with the blends. And you don't have to do the blending of two shades or anything. You can just use them to color in one shade. That's it. Done. Okay. Like I said, as easy or as involved as you want it to be. So that's our first method of coloring. Um, I'm going to go ahead and punch this out because my second uh, method of coloring is going to be a little beyond the lines. <laughs> so I am using the two inch punch, circle punch with these tonight, but um, the, hello, the circle saying stamp set actually is part of a bundle with the two and I think it's three eighths inch circle punch. So it's a little bit bigger of a circle is all. Uh, I wanted this to come right up on it. So that's why I chose the smaller one, but you can save 10% if you get this with the two and three eighths inch circle punch. 
There we go. True testimonial. And I can vouch for this because Penny um, is very coloring resistant. She does not like to be, she kind of feels like she's forced to do it sometimes. But yeah, she likes coloring with the blends too. So, and I will say that was the thing that, that was the product that kind of was my gateway drug into coloring <laughs> was our Stampin' Blends. Because when I tried to do watercoloring and all these other kinds of things before, it always just turned out to be a mess. I never used them. It, ugh, I was not happy. Now I'm much happier. So, And I, I owe a lot of that to the blends, kind of that working with it and seeing, you know, and practicing. Because here's the deal. If you remember back, you know, if you cook or if you bake um, or if you have any kind of, like if you cross stitch, I don't know, anything that you had to learn how to do, right? Ride a bike. The first time you ever did it, you were not an expert. The second time you did it, you probably still weren't an expert, you know? Um, we all make mistakes. We all have a learning curve. Some of us have more of a learning curve on some things and less on others. So you never know, but you're not going to be an expert colorer immediately. So if you're just starting out, get some stuff and practice. And I will say having the right tools and the right um, mediums really makes a big difference. So next we're going to move on to our blending brushes, which is another product that I really love. Um, I find it super easy to use these. Uh, we have them in two sizes. This is the regular size. And let me just get this up close here because Look at all of those bristles. And they're super soft. <laughs> I love these things. Much better than sponges and all those other things that don't give you a really good even coverage. These are great. We also have a smaller size. The, the head of them, the bristle part is just smaller. So for more detailed work, which totally could work on these. I do not have the smaller size yet. <laughs> um, but I'm going to show you how the regular size works just fine on this. So once again, I stamped this in the Memento Black ink. You could stamp this in any ink color because the ink blending really doesn't do much as far as like um, smudging your lines. So you could use regular stamping pads. You could use our stays on. You could heat emboss, all sorts of things. So I'm going to start with our Lemon Lolly. And I have uh, two sets of these brushes, so that makes six altogether, I believe. And I have just designated them to yellow, blue, red, green, that kind of thing. And I just kind of clean them in between and stick with the color family. So, so you can just kind of dab on your ink pad. See, it's really good. And then I start off the design so that you don't get this big splotch in the middle of your design. And I'm just going to circle around and get a good ink blend over this sun. I'm not going to add any of the orange to this one. And ink blending, you can see, is less exact. So you're not going to do this for really big detail work. You just want an overall color. And this particular stamp, you would think, oh, I, like it's got a lot of lines in it. I need to really color this. No, you can totally get away with ink blending. So that's all the yellow I'm going to do. And let's move on to that misty moonlight again. And in fact, I'm going to dab just towards the end of this brush. Excuse me. So that um, I can kind of use that and that'll help get a little more detailed, a little more accurate. can change directions. You can add more ink or take it, you can't really take it away. So uh, that's what I, I usually say is kind of just a little dab, start off of your design so you see how dark it is, and then just start blending up into it. We got a little bit of blue into that sun, not a big deal, because we didn't want this to be exact, right? It's, 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 uh, it's more of a guideline. <laughs> So literally that's all I'm going to do for ink blending. To uh, clean these, you can wash them with like, you know, some dish soap and water and that kind of thing. Normally I take a microfiber cloth, I keep it in the drawer with these 
and I just rub them on the microfiber cloth. You can also just rub them on your scrap paper until they rub clean. They obviously are stained still. And because there might be some residual ink in there, that's why I decided to designate one color per brush. So that if I went to a different yellow, it wouldn't be like, oh my gosh, a blue to a yellow or something. I wouldn't ruin my stamp pad. I wouldn't ruin my brush. Everything would be a-okay. All right, let us punch this one out. So when I've been punching, because the circle punch is a bit bigger than this image, I've been coming up to the bottom of the wave and not leaving a gap on the bottom. I've been leaving the gap kind of on the top. So there we have two very different looks from two very different mediums. Pretty simple, both of them, really. Okay, moving on next, we have, we're gonna start watercoloring a little bit. Don't panic. <laughs> okay, so when you wanna watercolor, if you're gonna do a straight watercolor like this, I recommend the Stazon ink pads. We have it in jet black. We also have, a, I think it's called Saddle Brown. So it's a, it's a warm, rich brown, it's really pretty. Um, but Stazon is a solvent ink or an alcohol-based ink. So opposites attract, right? So alcohol ink, you can use water with it to do water coloring and you won't smudge your lines. The other thing about Stazon is that it can um, stain and affect your stamps because it's a solvent ink. So you want to get that off of there. So we do have a special cleaner, Stazon cleaner. And this is going to look gunky because that's stained. It's just a foam tip and you literally just rub it against your stamp and the, um, it's like one of those sponges you lick envelopes with. <laughs> It'll just get that cleaner all over the stamp and then you can just clean it on your chamois or your stamp and scrub and you're all good to go. But you do want to clean those right away because you don't want that ink kind of eating away at your stamps. Okay. All right. So we are going to do this one. This is just straight stays on. The other thing that's very important when you're watercoloring is using the right paper. And this is our watercolor paper. So if you see, let me see here. I don't know if you can really tell on camera. This one has a little bit of a um, texture to it. This is our basic white, and it's also much thicker. And it's gonna hold up its shape against water. Um, it's literally made for water coloring. So it's a very important, like I said, the right tools are gonna give you a much better result. Yeah, um, we do have the special stays on cleaner. Now I have not always used it over the years, but um, the stays on is much more, could be much more damaging to our photopolymer stamps. So because of that, and because I started doing more watercolor and using stays on, I decided I would just get the cleaner. And I mean, this is a big bottle and it goes a long, long way. So probably won't need to buy it too often. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's, it's, it's a really good idea. I, obviously it affects the rubber as well, but it's even worse, I think, on the, the photopolymer is more vulnerable to it um, because of the materials. So you just wanna make sure to get it good and clean. Okay, so once again, we have our uh, watercolor pencils and you can do this a couple of different ways. So you can actually use the watercolor pencils just as like regular coloring pencils and just leave them that, that way and go for that look. And I'll show you before I blend anything what that's gonna look like. This is our assortment too. We have two different assortments of watercolor pencils. They have different colors in them as all. Well. So this is number two. So if you want to, if you like the colors I'm using. So I'm gonna start with Night of Navy. And again, I'm just gonna go into under that wave. And the harder you press, the deeper the color is gonna be. So if you want to just use your watercolor pencils and not bother blending them at all with water, um, you want that kind of colored pencil look, that's fine. You can go, so you can, I pressed pretty hard there. And then you could do a very light press. 
and you'll get kind of that two different shades, okay? Now I'm pulling out the balmy blue and I'm gonna, and this is kind of, I'll show you both ways of doing this. So this is one way you can just color your image directly. We'll go all balmy blue up top. All right, so you could just leave it like that. Looks like colored pencil, absolutely. Or you can grab our water painters. So these come in a pack of three. They have a wide tip brush, a medium, and then the skinny, skinny one. I usually have a folded up paper towel. And there are, it says push on the sides, on both sides. So you just put your thumb and your finger there. You give it a little push till the water's running because you can fill this with water. And then I'm simply going to pull that color since I did two of them. I want to do just like I did with the blends and I want to blend these together. If you need a little more water, you can just give it a squeeze. And that is where the watercolor paper comes in great because it can stand up to a puddle of water. And then when you're done, you want to move on to another color. You just squeeze some water out onto your paper towel and keep squeezing and rubbing until it comes out clear and you're ready to move on to another color. So no need to have different brushes for different colors or anything like that. Now look how gorgeous that is and that just blended so well. It doesn't even look like colored pencil anymore. Pretty cool. So now what I'm gonna do, let me show you the other way you can apply the watercolor pencils. Um, let's grab Cajun Craze and Crushed Curry. You can actually take your water painter and go right to the pencil tip and then go onto your cardstock. Now I will say this is definitely a more tedious way to do it. There we go. But you won't have any of those colored pencil lines at all. Because it'll be just like you dipped into paint instead of pencil. So there's a couple of different ways. I do prefer usually um, coloring on my image and then blending it uh, because, as I've mentioned before, I'm a little impatient. <laughs> so for me, I have a lot more um, control if I am just coloring right on here and not worrying about filling it all in. You know, you can leave big gaps and then you can fill that in when you pull the color in with the water painter. And this is the crushed curry. So that will lighten up, I think, a little bit when we put the water on it. So let's just put like a dab. There we go. A little drip. Yeah, that's brightening up really well. Pull that water over here. I don't want a lot of water on this tonight just because I'm on camera and I'm not going to let it sit and dry. I would rather it pretty much be dry when I'm done. <laughs> so I am going to pull this into that Cajun craze a little bit. This is another advantage of the watercolor paper because it is thick and it's made for watercoloring. It's made to stand up to the water. You can kind of go over and over things a little bit. So there is, that's really vibrant. So if you compare, we've got our blends, we've got our blending brushes, and then we've got our watercolor pencils. Do you have a favorite yet? <laughs> I've got one more to show you. So let's go ahead and punch this out just in case. I don't want to ruin it. Make sure it's all, yeah, it's dry enough. There's no puddles. 
I think I'm actually going to let that bottom edge show because it's kind of pretty and watercolory, right? Very different looks, absolutely. So this last one, as you can see, I have heat embossed with copper embossing powder. Um, I love using heat embossing when I'm watercoloring because then I'm not worried about anything smearing. Um, also, the heat embossing kind of acts like little dams for the water, so it kind of keeps the color in areas sometimes. And it's uh, a really cool effect. And it took me, it took me a lot of practice, I'll be honest, to get good at this because I am not inherently good at coloring. So um, when I had to watch a lot of videos and see a lot of people doing things and, and a lot of trial and error. So this is one of those more involved ones. So when you are heat embossing, I will recommend that you use a, um, an embossing buddy. It's kind of, it's, I don't know if it's cornstarch or rosin or what's in it, but basically when you rub it over your cardstock and then you do your stamping, it helps um, keep any of these stray little flecks like that from happening. <laughs> I did not use that when I was embossing this yesterday. The other thing you'll want when you're embossing is a Versa, excuse me, a Versamark pad. It is, this is very stained, but basically it's a clear ink. It's super sticky, it stays wet longer, so that when you pour your embossing powder on it, it will stick to the image. So you'll stamp up your image in Versamark, you'll pour over the embossing powder, and then just shake off the excess, just like you did in kindergarten when you put glue on the paper and then put glitter all over it, and then you shook off the excess that wasn't on the glue. It's the same principle. The only thing that's different is then you take your heat tool and you heat it and it makes it all pretty, and shiny and raised and very, very fun. <laughs> Heat embossing is one of my favorite uh, techniques. So, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use our regular Stampin', uh, classic Stampin' pads to watercolor this image. Same colors, I'm gonna start with my Lemon Lolly, move to my Midnight, Misty Moonlight. Wow, Midnight, it was close. <laughs> So when you, um, normally when you're stamping, you would close your ink pad like that, right? But what you can do, because these are flexible, is if you squeeze it a little bit, you'll get a little pool of ink right there. Alternately, if you don't want to do that, you can take your little re-anchor and just drop a couple of drops in the lid and use that as kind of, it's a little artist palette, okay? So I'm going to take my water painter again. This time, I'm going to squeeze out a little bit of water on here and kind of wash it over the area that I want to color. I'll show you this in a second. So I have made the sun part very wet. It's not puddling, but it's quite a bit. I'm also going to squeeze out just a couple drops onto the ink lid and kind of mix that in. And then all I really need to do is I can swish it around or I can just kind of do some drops. This is a very light shade, so it's gonna be very subtle. So if you want a, um, a deeper shade, you're gonna use less water. And once again, you can always add more it's very difficult to tone it down and make it lighter once you've already applied too much. <laughs> so always, you know, less is more you can add. And I do kind of dab instead of trying to like actually paint. And I think that's how I normally see what I call true artists. <laughs> Those that actually, you know, like watercolor for a living kind of thing. Um, that's more like what they do. So again, very subtle. Oh, it shows up really pretty on camera. And you can see it's still quite, you know, wet, but it's not puddly. But that is the advantage of that watercolor paper. And I'm going to show you when I'm done here, what happens when you try to watercolor on the basic white paper, because I did that as well, so that you would have that comparison. Misty Moonlight. 
we will give it a good squeeze. Again, we have our nice little puddle of ink. We will put water down on the waves, which seems redundant. <laughs> and I'm not gonna worry about leaving those, oh, I guess I did leave those waves um, white. So I guess I will. Now this is a deep color, so I am definitely gonna do some water there and make sure that I am coming back in to get more color when I need it, instead of just grabbing from that big, deep mass of blue, because that will give me some very deep blue. <laughs> and I might not want that. As I said, I can always add more. Kind of daubing again. I'm going to try to dry this off just a tad because I do want to add a little shading underneath that wave. So I want it to be a little darker there. I'm just going to grab the tiniest bit from that deep pool that doesn't have a lot of water in it. So here's where all my water's concentrated. So I'm just kind of dipping the tip of my brush into where it's actually really blue. And then I'll just pull that down. Once again, we'll just drip water until that's clear. And we're all good. And there is a very delicate watercolored image. It is not perfect. It does not need to be perfect. Yes, waves do need to be wet. They tend to uh, just behave better when they're wet, right? <laughs> so I am not going to punch that one out because it does have some puddles of water there and I don't want to ruin it since I went to the trouble of watercoloring it. <laughs> um, these also I did want to point out it's funny, they unscrew, but they actually unscrew kind of backwards from the tips, and then you would just fill this with water and then screw it right back in, and you're good to go. So this one yesterday after I was done was empty, and then I have, you know, those like, um, I think you can get them at Sam's Club or any decorating store, like cake decorating and stuff. Those little squeeze bottles that are for like ketchup or mustard. Um, I have one of those just full of water here in the craft room. And that way I can refill these, uh, anything like that, that just needs a little squirt of water and it needs kind of some precision placement. <laughs> I just have one of those to here. So very easy to use. Okay, so let's get some of these things out of the way. And where is my... Here. I told you I had a basic white piece that I was going to show you. I know it was here. Well, she wonders where she put that. Probably, yep, there it is. Okay, so I put my watercolor guys right next to each other. I did do this one in silver, but so that's a really good example of like it, you can see it kind of warped the cardstock because the water soaked in. It's not as vibrant. It does not blend as well. And then here's the watercolor pencil. Again, you can see it did not blend as well. It definitely looks more watercolor pencil-y. It didn't, the colors didn't blend together as well either. So definitely watercolor paper if you want to watercolor. Watercolor paper is not expensive. Um, it comes in, I, I want to say like six by nine sheets, something like that. Um, so absolutely worth the investment if you're going to watercolor and do it properly. <laughs> because you will be much happier if you have good results. So our main card is uh, Misty Moonlight. It is just your regular eight and a half by five and a half. Scored at four and a quarter. And I have in the video description put supply links to each of the versions of cards. So I will show you those again in a minute. 
but um, the first one is with the Stampin' Blends and I've labeled each of them. The second one is with the blending brushes. The third one is with the watercolor pencils. The fourth one is with the um, heat embossed and watercoloring. And that way you'll, you'll see which ink you need to use, any tools that you need, all that kind of stuff. Those are all in each supply list. So depending on which method you wanna practice on, that'll be all good there. Okay, um, here we go, a little inside piece. Let's find our stamp set again. What do we wanna do, some pretty shells? I think so. We'll do a little, some pretty little shells in the middle. With our misty moonlight, and I don't want this to be really strong, so I'm gonna stamp on my grid paper first and then go to the inside and it's just a nice light pretty little thing right there it is I'm like where's my chamois <laughs> we had to um do a deep clean on the chamois and the stamp and scrub yesterday because the fun brothers were over <laughs> my grand boys and uh, we were giving mom a break so she could get some cleaning and some other stuff done at her house. So she kept uh, baby Harrison at home so he could nap. And the two older ones came over and it was just too hot to do anything outside. So we went and got ice cream. And then we came home and watched some shows and then we did some stamping. And they're very funny. They always seem to go for the really deep toned stamp inks so jeffrey tends to go for real red lately and james wanted knight of navy so it's like sure pick like why didn't you both just pick black for crying out loud <laughs> and they like to smush that they are actually pretty good stampers um but they do tend to get the blocks in the ink too so the blocks were covered with red and blue really deep tones <laughs> And so I was, you know, using the chamois and then the stamp and scrub. I had to turn this chamois over. It was like, ooh. Luckily, just a quick trip to my kitchen sink took care of those. So on my sample as well, I used all four of the sheets of um, kind of wavy paper from the Bright and Beautiful designer series papers. So I grabbed this one because it was still kind of had some suggestion of waves and a little fun thing I did was grabbed my wink of Stella brush and I added some little glittery waves in there where the sun would hit them right super pretty I love wink of Stella so this one seems to have more room on this side to stamp a greeting. So I'm going to use my best trio punch on the opposite side on this one, just to take the corner off, just for a little bit of interest. And let's stamp a greeting on it. Why I put my stamp away. Let's say warm hello again. And I'm gonna use my Night of Navy, or my Misty Moonlight. <laughs> Guys, it's a Monday, huh? Woo! And I do love that these um, particular papers have a nice little spot up top for stamping a greeting like this. This whole pack of paper has a whole bunch of different kind of wavy ombre look um, in different colors. There's the Lost Lagoons, there, I think there's Pretty Peacock, um, Berry Burst, I don't know. So there's quite a few different colors of the ombre effect, which is really nice. So you could do this exact card in a lot of different ways and just pick a different stamped image to go with it. Like the Pretty Cupcake, you could color that as well. All right. And that, I mean, seriously, you guys, this card that I made from, for Friday was so simple. Like, look at how pretty the other side of that is for crying out loud. Cool. A little bit of stamp and seal. Let's 
let's do the watercolor pencils this time. I like those. So we will pop that up with some dimensionals to give it, you know, some dimension. <laughs> Excuse my bangs. They're getting a little long, aren't they? I'm growing them out, so <laughs> I'll try to flip them out of my way. But then my glasses are halfway down my nose, so. <laughs> All right, so that one will go over here this time. And there you go. There is your completed card. Super easy to do because the paper does all the work, aside from the coloring, but I gave you four different options of coloring from easy to more difficult. So once again, let me show you. This was the heat embossed with water coloring. This was the watercolor pencils, and I will say not as good of a job as I did tonight, for sure. <laughs> the blending brushes and the stamp and blends so there are your four coloring methods for tonight i am working on a coloring guide that will go out exclusively to those who um uh, get my email newsletter so if you have not signed up for that yet make sure that you are signed up i'm hoping to get that out later this week um, Couple of other things that are going on. I do want to remind you that you have about a week left, eh, just over a week left to redeem any coupons you earned in July. So if you put in at least a $50 order in July, you should have received, received an email with a coupon code worth $5. That Those must be redeemed in August. So you've got until a week from Thursday. The other thing that's going on in August is our kit sale. So um, this is not for paper pumpkin kits. This is for our kits collection, which you can go on and peruse on my website and uh, up to 30% off kits. And the great thing about our kits, I love them. Uh, we have kits that are cards. We have them that are treat boxes, tags. We have a little memory notebook. We have some home decor pieces. And we even have one of those card organizers. It's like a spiral notebook with pockets. So you can write down everybody's birthday and anniversary and all that kind of stuff and then tuck cards in where you need them. Um, super, super fun. All right, I think that is about it for that. Hello there, friends. <laughs> so I'm hoping that I gave you some good tips tonight. Once again, the right tools really do make all the difference. The right supplies, it's, it's, it's just make or break because you just, you're not gonna get as good results and then you're gonna be frustrated and you're gonna say, I can't color, <laughs> but you can. If I can color, you can color. <laughs> so I hope you learned a little something new tonight. And if you did, go ahead and share the video so that you can uh, share that knowledge with your friends and family. Uh, until next week, I'm still Nan Gerlitz. Happy stamping. <laughs>